Hi friends, our next course is SDN and NFE. In this course, we will cover several topics. Those include Our next topic is NFV basics. As IT infrastructure, including compute and storage functions, continues as unavoidable rally towards virtualization, networking is the next logical area where network operators can virtualize to keep pace with technological change. As applications increasingly tax networks for bandwidth, flexibility, and speed, the idea of overbuilding networks to accommodate peak traffic loads becomes unsustainable and unaffordable. It is no longer acceptable to purchase application-specific hardware, engineer and configure it for that unique application and expect it to be in service for 10 years or more. What is needed is greater agility and control of the network and its core functions. This virtualization implies programmability using software control. Following the recommendations of ETSI and the NFV Industry Standards Group ISG, NFV has emerged as the means to virtualize network functions ideally over an SDN. Today, many network functions are implemented as special purpose, custom-built devices. These devices have custom hardware, firmware and chipsets that help accelerate performance. With NFV and SDN, more and more of that same functionality is being implemented in software rather than in hardware. Most of us know Moore's Law which focuses on the concept of diminishing returns, network functions that previously were possible only via highly customized hardware and software can now be implemented totally in software. This basic fact drastically changes the network landscape for service providers and other network operators. NFV gives service providers and operators the opportunity to lower their network infrastructure costs while speeding up the configuration and deployment of new network services. This new, more flexible, software-based network service environment allows service providers and operators to quickly spin up new network services as needed for specific situations and customers, shortening the process from the weeks or months to days or even minutes. This business agility creates a significant competitive advantage because it allows network operators to pursue new markets and opportunities that were not economically viable using traditional networking hardware and software and do so much more quickly. Our next topic is what is NFV? NFV can reduce or eliminate application specific proprietary hardware from the network infrastructure. Instead of requiring a network operator to deploy new hardware components for each new service or application, the NFV model provides the same functionality using virtual appliances running on commodity into 86 servers. So if we can say conceptually an operator can deploy a virtual appliance on demand and upgrade its functionality through software updates over time. Given figure presents a comparison of the classic network model versus the new network model. 
Classic network model features hardware based appliances and components while the new virtual network model utilizes virtual appliances and components. Traditional physical networks incorporate specialized hardware that offers one physical node per role, manual installation processes per site and static hard to scale operations. Meanwhile, virtualized networks are software based. Multiple roles may run on the same hardware components. Virtual networks enable remote operation and management. They are dynamic and easy to scale based on operational requirements. Firewalls, provider edge PE routers, deep packet inspection DPI and encryption are a few examples where currently an operator typically deploys separate hardware often from different vendors. Each hardware element faces its own undesirability cycle, requires its own certification activities and needs to be managed often in unique ways. Managing these multiple vendors and functions is complicated and fundamentally too expensive to scale and support. And the worst part is the ability to quickly turn up new applications is difficult to impossible for most service providers. Our next topic is how does NFV work? Let's get into the topic. In the NFV model, virtual applications residing on physical or virtual servers replace dedicated hardware based network appliances. Operation and administration functions are handled through an orchestration system that coordinates the virtual appliances in operation on a network. Like virtual machines, virtual appliances are selected based on end customer needs and deployed as needed when and where they are required. Scaling to adapt to changes in customer need is based on loading software onto the appropriate servers. Further, when the virtual appliance is no longer needed, the space on the server can be freed up for use by another application. The sharing of resources in this way helps service providers to drive down their overall costs. Why is NFV needed? Let's see. NFV promises to simplify the physical network architecture while improving its ability to scale and adapt to technological change. For example, a regional bank currently supports its branch locations through an IP Ethernet network that demands edge routing, encryption and Ethernet switching between its corporate campus and regional or local branch locations. Currently, the bank would purchase, qualify and manage three separate hardware elements to achieve this functionality. Costs include CAPEX to purchase each item, OPEX for qualification testing and installation, and then ongoing OPEX to manage the services. Each element also consumes valuable physical space and energy in a data center or wiring closet. Leveraging NFV, the bank's network service provider would be able to provide managed routing, encryption for data in motion, and virtualized security services to the bank at a very attractive price point with superior capabilities. A single commodity server could be installed at the bank's corporate campus and the application software for each of the three applications would be downloaded over the service provider network and execute on the single server. There is even the option for the network service provider to provide some applications as managed services that execute on a server at the network operation center instead of at the bank's premises. Further, as functionality evolves or standards change, for example, in encryption or virtualized security, updates are made through software remotely without physically touching any hardware. As service providers and enterprise customers alike continue to demand better offerings at lower costs, NFV introduces the concept of highly agile, software-based network functions that increase responsiveness 
to end user requirements while being easier to manage and faster to deploy. NFV offers distinct competitive advantages over traditional network services. NFV can also give end user greater control over their own wide area network WAN services, including enabling elastic provisioning of network functions, increasing network agility, enhancing security, and providing considerable cost savings compared to dedicated appliances. Our next topic is why NFV now? NFV promises to not only improve the scalability and agility of a service provider's operations, but to do so while reducing networking costs. In the example where the network operator is providing virtualized services to a regional bank, capital expenses are reduced through fewer, cheaper and less frequent hardware purchases. Operational expenses are also reduced through lower requirements for physical space and energy and to a lesser extent through shorter vendor qualification and interoperability testing requirements. In place of hardware capital costs, the bank pays for the software-based virtual functions they selected for their branch locations. As the needs of their business change due to changes in customer habits, location of bank branches or the addition of new banking services, the bank's virtual network can change as needed by deploying exactly the network services they require. Our next topic is the NFV ecosystem. Let's get started. With NFV, network operators can approach the solution to their IT needs much like a trip to the grocery store, buying what is needed, when it is needed from a selection of different vendors. Service providers can purchase and quickly deploy only the amount of network resources required based on customer demands. Gone are the days when a service provider had to stock a large amount of single-purpose network equipment in anticipation of increasing customer demand that may or may not materialize. Less risk and expense translates into more revenue and profit for the service provider. Once the network operator has deployed a generic hardware appliance at the customer's premise, the customer can shop for the virtual network functions that will create the virtual appliances needed for network operations. The VNF ecosystem includes a wide variety of components from multiple vendors. A few examples of VNFs include V-router functionality, security and encryption, loading balancing, virtual setter box, WAN optimization and performing monitoring. Once selected, the VNFs are controlled and operated through what ETSI has defined as the management and orchestration function. MANO includes the distribution of VNFs across hosts, orchestration of VNF functionality and management of a VNF's lifecycle. Figure on the screen shows a selection of vendors offering VNFs and virtual appliances. NFV MANO consists of three functional areas that accomplish all tasks related to the life cycle of a VNF. NFV Orchestration, VNF Manager and Virtualized Infrastructure Manager. The NFV Orchestrator brings on new network services and VNFs and provides global resource management, validation and authorization of VNF infrastructure resource requests. VNFM controls specific VNF instances, coordinating infrastructure resource requests between the VNF instance and related network element management systems. The VIM controls and manages NFV infrastructure, which includes compute, storage, and network resources. Operators have multiple options in terms of the servers used for hosting VNFs, NFVO, and VIM, and their physical locations. Depending on service provider operations and enterprise strategies, servers could be virtual resources located in a cloud data center, a central office, a dedicated pod, or the customer's premises. 
Here I conclude this topic. Hope you understand all the concepts clearly. Meet you in the next topic. If you have any queries, please get in touch with us by typing your comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe to our videos. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.